Okay, so the video here is going to be about dilations and rotations from fixed points. Um, so our central question here, we're going to say, how are dilations and rotations done without the origin? So recall that dilations are typically enlarged or reduced while using the origin as the center of dilation. So when we were looking at uh, dilations back in a previous video, that's what we were doing. We were doing dilations with the center being the origin. Similarly, rotations are typically rotated around the origin as the center of rotation. Usually when we spin things, we spin them using the origin as the point that we're spinning them around. However, these transformations can be done with other fixed points as their centers. So let's start with dilations. When enlarging or reducing using a fixed point, as the center of dilation, we are going to imagine that that fixed point is the origin. So we gotta use our imagination here today. After finding the image, convert back to the real coordinates, okay? So this is gonna be kind of weird. We're gonna kind of live in a, a parallel universe for a little bit while doing these things, uh, but eventually we'll get back to these real coordinates. Okay, so let's try one out and we'll see all about what I'm talking about here. So example one. Uh, triangle ABC has A at 1, 1, B at 2, 0, and C at negative 1, negative 1. So here is our little triangle. Let's go ahead and copy those points down. So we got triangle ABC, A is at 1, 1, B is at 2, 0, C is at negative 1, negative 1. Okay, so now we're going to dilate this thing with a scale factor of 2, but we're not just going to multiply everything by 2 like we've done in the past because look at this. We're going to use 2, 2 as the center of dilation, okay? So what that means is that we need to now imagine a world where 2, 2, this point right here, we're going to imagine a world where that is the origin, okay? So forget about the x and y axis. These blue lines are the origin, okay? This is our new x and y axis. So I'm gonna call this our new points, all right? So in our new universe, in our new universe where the blue lines are our x and y axis, A is not one, one, right? A is now negative one, negative one, if we're using the blue lines as our x and y axis. B is not 2, 0. B is now 0, negative 2. And C, C is all the way over there at, what would that be? Negative 3, negative 3. Okay, so we have converted it to our parallel universe where 2, 2 is the origin. Now we are going to actually apply the dilation rule. So if we have a scale factor of two, our rule is two X, two Y. So now let's apply that rule to our new coordinates. Okay, so now we're gonna find A prime. A prime is now at negative two, negative two. B prime if I multiply everything by two, is now at zero, negative four, and C prime, C prime is now at negative six, negative six. Now we're gonna plot those, because we're still in the parallel universe, we're gonna plot those according to the blue lines. So negative two, negative two is right here. That's A prime. Zero, negative four, is right here, that's B prime. 
And C prime, negative 6, negative 6, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's all the way down here. So this big triangle here is our image. Now, let's go ahead and do the, the tricky part because those points are not the real coordinates, right? The real coordinates are using the real X and Y axis. So now that we're done, we are going to convert back to find the official coordinates for our image for triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. It turns out that A prime, B prime, C prime for A prime, the real coordinates of A prime is actually at zero, zero. It ended up back on the origin. B prime was not really at zero, negative four. It's really at two, negative two, according to our real X and Y axis. And C prime, C prime is not at negative six, negative six. That'd be off the graph. It's at negative four, negative four. So in totality here, for the final version here, this was the real coordinates of the pre-image. And these were the real coordinates of the image. So pretty strange. We had to hop over into that parallel universe for a second, but then we got back to reality. Okay, let's go to the next side here. We got one more of those we're going to try. So let's see here. A is at negative 1, 2, 3, 4. B is at 5, 0. And C is at negative 1, negative 2. Not A prime. I'm silly. So we got A, B, and C. These are the real coordinates of A, B, C. A is at negative 3, 4. B is at 5, 0. C is at negative 1, negative 2. Now we're going to try to dilate it with a scale factor of 1 half with negative 3, negative 4 as the center of dilation. So negative 3, negative 4 is down here. And we are going to imagine that that is the origin. Okay, so we're going to find our new versions of these points with those blue lines as our origin. So with that as our origin, um, A is not at negative 3, 4. A is at 0, 8 with the new x and y axis. B is at uh, 8, 4. And C is at 2, 2, according to our blue lines as our x and y axis. And now that we've converted it to this other world where we have this new x and y axis, let's apply the rule. The rule with a scale factor of 1 half would be 1 half x, 1 half y. So a prime should be at 0, 4 if we multiply everything by 1 half. b prime should be at 4, 2 if I multiply all of that by 1 half. And c prime should be at 1, 1 if I multiply everything by 1 half. So let's plot those. 0, 4 for a prime would be right here. Um, 4, 2 would be right here for B prime. And one, one would be right here for C prime. And once again, that was me plotting it on our new X and Y axis. And now that we have found A prime, B prime, C prime, all we gotta do is convert back to reality. We gotta come back to the real world. So where are those points 
really, where is a prime, b prime, and c prime according to the real x and y axis? Well, a prime is actually just at negative 3, 0. b prime is really at 1, negative 2. And c prime is really at negative 2, negative 3. So this big one was our real pre-image. And these are the real coordinates of the image. OK, so dilations, done. Um, rotations. When rotating around a fixed point, we're going to do something very similar. Um, we're going to imagine that the fixed point uh, is the origin. And then finding out after finding the image, we're going to convert back. So same strategy. We're just dealing it with rotations. So let's give that a shot here. Um, so let's plot these points. Negative 3. Well, let's write them down first. So triangle ABC. We got A at negative 3, 2. B at negative 2, negative 1. And C at 0, 0. So negative 3, 2. Negative 2, negative 1. And 0, 0. So these are our points. And we're going to rotate at 180 with negative 1, 2 being the center. So negative 1, 2, that's that point. So we're going to treat this as our new x and y axis. So with that in mind, let's figure out where our points are. A is now at negative 2, 0. B is now at negative 1, negative 3. And C is now at 1, negative 2. Now, rotating around 180 degrees, that rule was negative x, negative y. So let's figure out where our image is. A prime would be at 2, 0. B prime would be at 1, 3. And C prime would be at negative 1, positive 2. So 2, 0, 1, 3, and negative 1, 2. And that looks pretty good. That looks like we rotated it around that fake origin. So all that's left for us to do is convert that back into reality. Just figure out where the real A prime, B prime, C prime is. So in reality, A prime is at 1, 2. In reality, B prime is at 0, 5. And in reality, C prime is at negative 2, 4. So after all that, we've got our real pre-image, and we got our real image. OK. Last hurrah here, rotation of 90 degrees with 3, negative 3 as our center. So let's get down the pre-image. A is at 3, 2. B is at 4, negative 1. And C is at 1, 3. And we're going to rotate this thing 90 degrees around 3, negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, around this point. All 
Okay. So using that as our origin, using the blue lines as our new x and y axis, let's figure out what these points would be. So for example, A would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A is now at 0, 5. B is at 1, 2. And C, C is at negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 2, 6. So with those points, let's execute our rotation of 90 degrees. So that's going to be negative y comma x. That was the rule for rotating 90. So a prime is now going to be negative 5, 0. b prime is now going to be negative 2, 1. And c prime will be negative 6, negative 2. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. Here's a prime. B prime, negative 2, 1. And C prime, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 2. Down there. And that looks pretty good. That looks like we rotated 90 degrees around that other point. Now we just need to hop back to reality to figure out the official coordinates of our image. So A prime is really at negative two, negative three. B prime is really at one, negative two. And C prime is really at negative uh, three, negative five. Okay, so we have our official pre-image, and we have our official image. All right, time for y'all to try a few. Um, hop on over to the Your Turn Problems, where you've got one dilation, and you've got one rotation. Give those a shot, and then come back when you're ready to check. All right, let's see about this. So A, B, C, A is at negative three, zero. B is at four, one. C is at four, negative two. Uh, negative three, zero, four, one, four, negative two. Um, Oh, shoot, you know what? Your version says three zero, not negative three zero. That's what it's supposed to be. Forgot to fix that on mine. So this should be three zero. There we go, that's better. Okay, so we got three zero, four one, four negative two. And we're going to do a dilation with the scale factor of 2 with 5, 0 as the center. Okay, so 5, 0 is right here. So if we're using this as our new x and y axis, then our new points, a prime is now just at negative 2, 0. b prime is at negative 1, 1. And c prime is at negative one, negative two. So when I go to do the dilation with the scale factor of two, that's two x and two y. Um, let's find out where these points are. Sorry, I didn't mean to put primes on those. Um, so two times negative two is negative four zero. Um, for B prime, we're going to get negative 2, positive 2. And for C prime, we're going to get negative 2, negative 4. So negative 4, 0 would be right here. That's A prime. Negative 2, negative 2. I'm sorry, negative 2, positive 2 is right here. That's B prime. And C prime, negative 2, negative 4 is down here. 
So our new shape should look like that. And let's just convert it back to the final versions. So A prime is really at one zero. B prime was really at three two. And C prime was really at three negative four. All right, and the last one here A is at 4, 4, B is at 2, 0, and C is at 1, 3. And what are we doing here? We're going to use 2, 2 as the center. We're going to try to rotate, rotate this thing 270 degrees. All right, well, let's get our new versions first. According to our new x and y axis, a is now at 2, 2. Um, these are not primes. Why do I keep doing that? So a is at 2, 2. b is at 0, negative 2. And c is at negative 1, positive 1. Um, so let's do that rule of that 270. That rule is going to be y negative x. So a prime will be at 2, negative 2. b prime will be at negative 2, 0. And c prime will be at uh, 1, positive 1. So 2, negative 2. There's a prime. Negative 2, 0, there's B prime, and 1, 1, there's C prime. All right, we flipped that thing around 270 degrees, around that point as the origin. Now let's just get back to the final image. So A prime is really at 4, 0. B prime is really at 0, 2. And C prime is really at 3, 3. And there you have it. That wraps up this video. Hopefully you all did well.